I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit about the uh, uh, projects that the Soybean Promotion Board funds relative to nematodes because that is what I do. I'm a nematologist. As a little background, nematodes are microscopic roundworms that live in the soil. They're, they're pretty much ubiquitous. They're uh, in every field in Arkansas. The, the difference between a problem with a nematode and no problem is one of numbers. Um, there are several nematodes that are important in soybeans in Arkansas. The root knot nematode is probably the most important because it can be the harshest on the, on the crop. Soybean cyst nematode has been a historical problem in Arkansas. It's still alive and well in the state. It's not quite as dramatic, but it certainly can get in a farmer's pocket. And then we have a reniform nematode, which is kind of a newcomer. It's only been the last 20 or 30 years we've seen reniform in Arkansas. It's mainly a cotton issue. We really don't know yet how big a problem it's going to be on soybeans. My job is kind of varied because I conduct research on nematode issues in soybeans, um, but I also am responsible for the Extension Services Nematode Diagnostic Laboratory. And that laboratory provides um, assay services for nematodes, as you might expect. Because the nematodes live in the soil and because they're microscopic, it takes specialized equipment to get them out of the soil and get them identified so you even know you have a problem and to determine what the magnitude of the problem is. One of the issues in terms of determining how bad this problem is statewide is the fact that a few years ago we had 800,000 acres of cotton. Now we've got 200,000 acres. And much of that land was in cotton monoculture for years. Now the root knot nematode and the reniform nematode are major cotton issues as well. When we started a few years ago taking land out of cotton production and putting it into either corn or soybeans, we started finding where the root knot nematodes were really harsh because the cotton farmers historically had used nematicides routinely. Every year they'd apply nematicides which helped control the nematode. Corn is not really going to show a lot of symptoms, but it will increase a root knot nematode phenomenally because of the root system it's got. Corn's pretty tolerant, but it's a good host. It's when the farmers put soybeans in these fields, with old cotton fields that had been building the root knot nematode for 40 years, they found out how bad root knot can get. And so one of the things that the soybean board is doing now that is going to be a real, real help to the farmers is basically sponsoring just simply a survey of the state of Arkansas. Soybean fields, fields that were in soybeans, are in soybeans, or will be in soybeans. Just to find out how bad is this problem, what nematodes are in these fields, and what levels are they? You gotta know what nematode you got, you gotta know where it is, and you gotta know how bad it is. Nematodes are parasites. They're a little bit like mistletoe on an oak tree. It's not to their advantage to kill the crop outright because they're, they're known as obligate parasites, which means they need to have a living host to complete their life cycle. The nematode strategy, however, is to take all of the photosynthate that should be going to make soybeans redirect it to make more nematodes. So you have a, a really poor plant such as these here. This, uh, you can see I'm kind of in an area of the field that is, uh, is shorter than normal and, and kind of chlorotic or yellow. Um, the soybeans should look like this. And so you can see what the nematodes do. They don't kill the plant, they, they prolong the agony season long, but they uh, basically get in the farmer's pocket. Uh, one of the reasons that we call this nematode the root knot nematode is because it makes galls on the roots when it infects the plant. You can see this. Nutrients and water are not going to go in or up through the plant efficiently as they would in an uninfected root system. Now, nematodes are not mobile as are insects. They don't have legs, they don't have wings, so they're not going to move long distances. They can be moved long distances by dirty equipment, uh, you know, muddy tires, 
anything that moves soil or, or plant material like this. But mostly the areas within a field that are affected are going to get slowly larger over time. They expand three or four feet a year. And they usually expand with the road direction because that's the way the soil is worked and moved. The question is how many really bad spots with high population densities in the field do I have? Um, you know, one spot, not a big deal. 40% of the field with a nematode problem that's severe, that's a big deal. In addition to the obvious yield issues that nematodes can cause, you can see how, how stunted and yellow and poor, just simply they make weed management a lot harder because, uh, um, you know, the canopy never closes. So, so you've got a lot of issues with weeds that you won't have in a good, clean, nice, healthy field. The unfortunate fact is nematodes are difficult to manage. Number one, they're soil borne, and so it, you know delivering pesticides in the soil as opposed to on the soil for herbicides is a lot more difficult. The, the, the system is a lot more complex. The day the seed is planted in a field is the last day the farmer has to manage a nematode problem that year. You've selected your variety, you've chosen your seed treatment or not, you've chosen to put a nematicide out or not, you're done. So whatever you did beforehand, you're going to live with for the rest of this season. The soybean checkoff program has been extremely valuable in providing an opportunity for us to work out some of these management programs. Um, they're, they're fun to work on new nematicides to see if there's anything out there that might be useful. Certainly rotation programs, we're involved in a couple of really longer term rotation studies to look at nematodes as well as other things as far as how do we manage, how do we deploy these crops the most effectively. We're never going to eradicate it from a field and we don't need to. What we need to do is keep it from costing us money.